Good morning, pantry clubbers, and welcome to this episode of Walkies. I'm walking along a tree tunnel entrance into Hurst Woods, and that's Jazzy, who's ready, raring to go. She's hassling me to throw the ball every few yards. Now, even though we're late into September now, it's a glorious morning and um, ever so warm. Go on, get out, it's up there. That's it. Daft thing. The birds are singing almost as if it's a spring morning. Um, I'm walking along here. I feel like I've got a spring in my step because it's such a glorious morning. Quite a busy day so it's um, coming up to seven. I wanted to get on, get out so we can get all our jobs done and do the fun things as well today. Um, uh, work in Ella's bedroom, see if we can turn that into something uh, much more than what it is right now. We've been decorating that. And then once we've done those, we've got some shopping to do. And then the afternoon should be good. I'm gonna take a ride out on the Sinus. Go and see Mark. Maybe pick up some slows and discuss uh, some horticultural and agricultural things. Yeah, it's not horticultural, agriculture. And um, maybe uh, meet old Frank, a nice, ride back through along the B roads probably come back via Bellsy Green and um, then we'll take it from there I think we're going out with our lovely neighbours Richard and Julie now this is interesting so I was here a week ago things have changed already Um, on my right a huge beech tree has been felled I don't know why but it's only just been felled it's absolutely massive and rests along the edge of the path. Yeah, I can see it. Maybe it had a problem, because I'm just lifting off the top here. And there is a big kind of rotten core to it. And whether or not it started, that's interesting, because I'm walking the whole length of the thing, and then I'm at the next part, which is, um, well, I guess 20 feet plus along, and it's been sawn in half again, and then still is a big rotten core core in it and this branch big branch on the side looks rotten as well yeah it doesn't look particularly great and it's huge you wouldn't have been able to tell that unless you were an absolute tree expert unless of course the top broke and they came and took the rest out anyway um let's just pause this now and i'll give you any more interesting insights that i find on my walk as i trundle along Oh, it's a broken ball, Jazzy. Why do we bring a broken ball with us? That's not going to make it all the way around. Now I'm walking along the path as if... uh, So you come through the gate at the bottom end from um, Colwood and Rust Hall end. And I'm walking straight up the hill along the path. Must be an ancient path. Through these woodlands. That takes you all the way along and out the other side towards Smockham Farm um, Junction. We won't be going that far, we're going to go up and do a circuit. Jesse, where's the ball? Where is it? We lost it already. Uh, this often happens. I'm stood here listening to the birds. There's quite a lot of noises seem to be dripping down into the wood. Um, things falling I guess Um, this particular part there are chestnuts very immature chestnuts on the ground they're not ready yet and the precursor to the main event but anyway it's good to know they're there sort of place to keep an eye on we can come back in a couple of weeks as we progress into the autumn harvest some so um, it's a few minutes later and I've branched off the main path, as I often do, start heading up. 
Um, start heading north. It's a big path. It's a well trod path. Um, but in a minute, I'm going to break off of that one and take more of a scramble route. And um, we're going to dive up. Come on, Jazzy. Dive up. There you go. She knows it already. She's up there. It's a small track. This way. Ooh. Good girl. And we're going to break out. I'm walking through the bracken now. Totally different kind of feel to it as you get up here. I'm breaking out. I can see the sky above me as the treetops and the cover breaks open. And uh, it's like I'm emerging into a prehistoric world. All this bracken everywhere. Can't see Jazzy at all. She's gone. She knows where she's going. Something just dipped out of a tree there. It's a bird of some kind. Now, I wish I saw what it was because it didn't look like a regular pigeon or something. It was a solitary feathered friend. Still, we won't know what that is today. Pause again. Right. Up the top here used to be a bench. I've sat on it, but eventually it's... I think it may be someone set fire to it. But uh, it's gone. A couple of large iron spikes sticking up about two feet out the ground. Very dangerous. So what I'm doing is uh, just standing with them, bending them over. They're just, it's just possible to do that. I hate the thought of a dog tearing along here. Flat out, chasing the ball and wallop straight into that. That could be very nasty. Impaled on one of those would not be good. Anyway, let us proceed. Right, I think I've pretty much reached the highest point now. And I'm, um... Opening, open, it's opening up into another distinct area of the wood. It's got its own character again. Um, it's a much more open part. Just solitary trees. I've um, got some oaks. Uh, there seems to be less beeches up here. Oaks that are striving forward. Higher to get to the light. Um, the interesting part is there is literally no flora covering at all. There's no bracken no brambles um, and for whatever reason whether it's probably human activity it's just kept clear with just solitary large trees and what's happened over the last um, since the time I've been walking here I've noticed that um, people have been gathering lots of sticks reasonable sized branches rather gathering them together and making shelters and I'm walking past a fire as, as well um, I don't actually like it very much. I think it destroys the natural, um, the natural landscape. I like the fact that it's open. Um, now, I'm certain if this was the scouts or guides, or whatever, doing their own thing and practicing survival, they would clear it away. But this is not that. This is this is this is human intervention in the natural landscape and its litter. It's organic litter, but it destroys the landscape. Right this time of year, of course, we're getting um, into the fungi season. Um, I'm walking past a birch. Birch are notorious for having um, tree kinds of fungus. I don't think it's a bracket fungus. Um, just possibly a Jew's ear. Uh, quite white, quite fresh and new. I'd say they look delicious if they were edible. Sort of thing I could take home and put in the frying pan. Jesse, help! Walking past another shelter. Well, if you just joined us, welcome to Walkies. It's Saturday morning, soon after seven, and we're in Hurstwood. I'm now at the northernmost corner, and on my right is the, the start of the fields of 
the schools at Bennett School. Fortunately, there's a nice big fence up there. Keep the dog in. I'm starting to descend now, so I've been up to the top. I'm walking through another notable kind of landscape part, which I always love. Um, they are big chestnut trees which have um, long since fallen over horizontally. They all lie very large, but shooting up for them from from their main trunks, their horizontal trunks, are some um, beautifully upright, straight as in, straight as you like chestnut um, new stems going up. But they're huge; they're almost like new trunks. And there's something strange about the way they look that looks almost um, ancient or prehistoric oh come on this way get out go on get out here's another notable thing that always kind of these different things always mark the route as you go around there's a um, silver birch here on my right and I've taken a photo and probably shared it before, but it's got a hideous, cankerous growth around it. And um, actually, it looks remarkably like a face. Um, I'm not sure I can particularly see anybody in it, in that face. Probably be very rude to suggest it was anybody, but it is nevertheless um, a remarkable human likeness in a cankerous form wrapped around silver birch which is destined for a, a shortened life because of it i'm walking straight through down towards crossing that road again and as i do so i'm walking um, um where a tree has been cleared and for many months the tree blocked the road and a and a um temporary path was forged by walkers going around the outskirts of the tree and that still exists actually but um, that will soon fade off into the into the uh, non-distinct parts of the wood and the, and the path's back open and everyone's happy on their journey again Now I stand at the top of the steep descent, so for those of you who know Hurstwood, it's off the main path. There's a sign which says no admittance to vehicles, Forestry Commission, and a remnants of an old gate there and an old two old posts, which one of which has almost entirely been consumed by a beech tree. And it's a sizable post. It's probably about four inches in diameter with a big top on it. Um, um, this is the steep part. Jazzy's at the bottom already because she knows at the bottom is the water. And that's what she really wants. Well, we've made it to the stream. Um, we're just at the little path as it crosses the stream and you can probably hear Jazzy. She's splashing around and um, she's doing her usual thing. Um, she gets very concerned about sticks in water and... Um, very um very um kindly she's rescuing them and um she doesn't leave like to leave any stick so um she's just grabbing a few out just to do a bit for the stick community and we're gonna make our way jesse this way up we're gonna head up the other side now so i'm walking to the top of uh, the most westerly boundary of the wood and um, this is uh, the, the trees are I've forgotten what I was saying we had a bit of an encounter with a jogger in a bright red t-shirt which is most disturbing for a little dog like Jazzy and uh, poor jogger tried to interact but um Jazzy soon put him in his place for stepping out of line. Anyhow, where was I? Yes. Now this part of the wood, this notable area, the landmark moment in the spring for this is the sea of bluebells which erupts here. And um, I remember walking through it in 
March time as we entered into lockdown. A mixture of sadness and beauty. Beauty lifted my heart, but underpinning it, I knew how sad it all was. Strange, everything looked so normal up here amongst the bluebells. And yet, as soon as you step outside of the wood, you're into a new era in our world. Well, it's all descend now. Descend, descend, descend. Back down to almost stream level. And um, Jess is going to throw herself in there, no doubt, in a moment. I'll try and keep her out. And, um, well, that's it for this week's episode of Ramblings. I mean, walkies. And I'm going to, um, wrap this up just by saying that next week I'll be back. Um, next week we're coming from Hurstwood. And, um, next week we're going to do the circuit anti-clockwise. And I'll be pointing out more notable landmarks, which, um, which mark out the route that we take on our walkies through Hurstwood. Hope you all have a very good Saturday and I hope that I see many of you soon. Goodbye for now.